All right, Lady Ada, what is this? We're in the club. New York's hardest club is Desco Lady Ada. Oscilloscopes, <laughs> Dax, RP 2350s, we've got it all. I'm playing some tunes actually from Dan. Um, yeah. Check can... out free MP3s for your download. Um, this is great because, it, you know, obviously we're not going to get it. Sound SoundCloud. <laughs> Sound down. Cloud.com slash Adafruit. Yeah. Not AI generated haters. No, this is real music. Okay, so what I'm, okay. But what I'm doing is I'm actually testing out this deck. So we, we need, let me just turn this on. I mean, I, I'm sure it sounds great. Um, we have a lot of boards that I want to do that have I2S digital output to play like MP3s or waves or whatever. And um, we don't have a lot of good I2S DACs in the shop. Like we have like one or two, but we our, our offerings are kind of slim. And so um, like like two or three years ago, uh, JP was like, hey, you know, we should have like the, the PCM 5100 series. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll get to it. So this is um, a breakout for the PCM 5102. What I like about this deck, first off, inexpensive, high quality, doesn't require an end clock. So it's great for Raspberry Pi or microcontroller boards. Um, line level out. And, you know, we will be revisiting that issue because I want to do the driver for the DAC on the um, Fruit Jam, which is the DAC 50, you know, 30, uh, TLV 320 DAC 3100, which has um, headphone out. This doesn't do headphone, it has a line level. So I'm actually playing music out of these little speakers. Um, I turned it off, but um, it's a great way to just sort of test stereo. And then on the oscilloscope, I look at the waveforms, make sure they... Um, look right and clean. I don't think the home you just yeah, yeah just turn it on. Um, but it sounds really good, so I'm kind of happy because the layout for these decks, it's always like you want to make sure you, you do a good job. But um, I don't hear like any static um, out of it. It feels really good. There's a filter on the output, and I think this is ready. So I'm going to make two versions: one with the 5102, and one with the 5100. They're like a dollar difference, so it's like there is a um, Price changed. Yeah, it's okay. I know where it went. Uh, there's a price uh, difference, and the quality is a little bit different. For some people, they might notice. So we'll have two versions of this breakout. I just have to test all the other like extra pins. These are like the standard I2S power and data pins, but these are the extras. I'm gonna just check those out before I uh, approve this for the shop. Okay, cool. Hey, Lady Ada, what is this? This is a new design. Oh. I uh, I wanted to kick off the year and maybe like do some um, cool new projects with people who we work with. So this is a design by uh, Timon, who um, makes a bunch of hardware, open source hardware that works with the compute module four and five. And like this kind of this flat design over here. Hold on, I'm not like really good at this. I'm sure there's like keys that are good. So this is the compute module that like people know and love the compute module five, yeah. the chip, the RP1, the flash, the USB, whatever, and like the power supply. And then, this is a board which uh, is this like a raspberry pi compute module camera yeah it <gasps> is but sorry i'm like really it's okay good at navigating okay so the way it works and he did an awesome like 3d model is the compute module plugs in on the back and there's a stomach qt port micro sd card um a bunch of passes and stuff underneath and then USB-C, and this goes into the compute module for like programming it um, and looking at the console a host USB connection. Um, this only does gadget mode, but this can be like a host if you want to plug in like a keyboard or a mouse and it's USB 3. Some GPIO buttons, HDMI output. Looks like this is the real time clock um, a battery, an optional battery. Maybe this is another I, yes, another I squared C port, um, big ass caps, um, shutdown button, which only I think works on the Pi 5. And then underneath, there's a little camera connector you can use a cable and mount a camera on so it's like kind of an all-in-one shape board and what you can't i think underneath you can kind of barely see here there's a um the connection for the mippy the the dsi so you can have this connect to a camera as a, a display as well so i was like oh let's just make like a really cute all-in-one low cost like backpack that makes the um the compute module do like a lot and can mount a camera. Okay, I have a request. When it's in gadget mode, can we have a little speaker or something go 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 gadget mode? Yeah, you can go 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 gadget okay. camera. All right, cool. This is, this is neat. Make an AI camera. Haters. Hey, Jackson Pollock, what is this? Oh no, Lady Ada. This is more like a screensaver, right? Yeah. Um, so this is a really cool demo. This is running on the RP2350 Fruit Jam board. And what you see here is my little 
seven inch monitor if you back up people can see yeah, it's like a little dvi hdmi monitor and this is a 320 by 240 demo of just random lines with random colors um 320 by 240 pixel doubled but what's really neat is it's not only coming out of the dvi port but it's using the HSTX peripheral. So this doesn't use any PIO and it doesn't use any timers and it doesn't use a single core, which means that we can use PIOs and uh, the extra core to do the BitBang USB host. Um, so with the I2S amp kind of working, um, the SD card working, the DVI working, um, and the USB being worked on, we're getting close to having all of the hardware functional on the Fruit Jam board. Cool. I still need a good name for it. Yeah. Lady Ada, it's me, Morpheus. <laughs> I'm getting you out of the rainbow matrix. Yeah. Um, this is a demo of um, the new Fruit Jam board shown here with the RP2350 and HSTX DVI. And uh, we got the, Jepler got the version with the 16-bit 320 by 240 color. And now this is kind of an interesting mode. This is text mode. So the buffer actually just looks like, I don't know, whatever, uh, 40 by 80 characters or so. But if you zoom in, you'll see it's rendered really beautifully because like the resolution is like 720p, but um, you can only write text. Like there's a font that this library comes with. And this is actually from the Pimeroni DVHSTX library, but um, we got it working with an Arduino, and this could be really cool for projects where you just want to show a lot of text and you want like high resolution, like a very beautiful um, look. I just really love this font, and I think, of course, you can add. Looks right. Um, yeah, if you wanted to have like different fonts or like more characters, but um, you know, just does a random color output. So looks this, like art. This mode, we might use it for something like um, you know, if we're doing a Z machine. Yeah. Where it like to just text adventure, like wouldn't that be a beautiful font to show on? Oh it? yeah, yeah. Transition screens and text adventures. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. What we're looking at. Okay, cool. Hey, what's this? Um, so I'm doing some testing with this new breakout board that I've designed for the TLV 320 DAC 3100, and what you're listening to is Scott. It's Tanute uh, talking about. Circuit Python on this Python podcast. Whoa. Yeah, weird. How's it happening? So I'm just gonna I just... heard you like Python, so you put Python in my Python. Python. Yeah. Let me just disconnect this because it's, it's tough to have two yeah. voices. Um, so this amplifier is I2S input and can do headphone or speaker output. And I had to fight with the PLL and configuration, but I finally got it working. And what I'm doing is I'm streaming a podcast through the ESP32 here. Um, I've got some code to do ESP radio that will, you know, configures the um, I2S amplifier, and then it connects to this Python podcast MP3, and it um, streams the audio using an, an audio library that exists already. And I, I did this before with a Max 98 357, but this time I'm using um, the TLV uh, 320 DAC 3100, because uh, I got the library pretty much running. So the good news is that, um, Amplifier works. I got the speaker output working. I also have the headphone working, but you wouldn't be able to hear it very well. And I've got the PLL generating the master clock from the bit clock. So you don't need like a second M clock line. And uh, I've course, the configuration is going great. Scott also got this working on CircuitPython. So, so far, um, we're getting farther and farther getting this board working, which means we'll be able to get this board working sooner because that's the same DAC chip that we have on okay. here. So okay. for Jam, okay. audio based off of the uh, TLV320 DAC working quite well right now. Okay, here is the Python version of Pico 8 Celeste running on the Fruit Jam here. And I can use these two buttons hidden under these wires to jump. So let's jump. It is running at the resolution 180 by 100. It's being upscaled for the TV to by HSTX to 720 by 400. Uh, that's giving us nice square pixels to the TV and not using a whole lot of memory bandwidth to be able to render via CircuitPython. If I hit Control C here, ah, whatever. All in Python. Python, Python, Python. Looks good. Super intense top secret this week. And by the way, these are the thumbnails that are on the videos. Um, I do not use any AI tools. Someone is like, oh, do you generate those? No, 
I actually spend time. This one, because of the font looks weird, it, it's not. I made this in, uh, I use like Acorn instead of uh, Photoshop. I see why but, they think that because it's a little gray blue, but, but it's actually, that is actually the font. And like this thumbnail was just, I was just, you know, really uh, tight on it. And then these are the photos from Jepler, but like, you know, this was not AI generated. Okay. Anyways, uh, that's top secret this week.